the following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We were all going out camping, me and three friends from university. Let me introduce my friends. This is Darren. I wouldn't say he is our group of friends leader. Actually, I would. He's the one that always gets us out of the house and into the action. He's the first one to hit on that cute girl by the bar. He's the first one to jump from the roof into the swimming pool. According to himself, he was even more impulsive as a child. I can only imagine his childhood and how he often, and how often he must have broken his leg, scraped his knee, and his head. Still, if it weren't for Darren, we wouldn't have half the amount of fun we have. This girl is Celeste. We have known each other since we were children. We met each other when she moved into the house next door when I was seven. My mom told me to go show her around the neighborhood, and after that we were inseparable for years. She's a nice girl, although her heart isn't the best. She has some kind of heart problem which I forgot the name of. This forced her to be away from school during extended periods of time during her childhood. Because of this, until we started university, I was her only friend. Still, she never complained, and I've always seen her as a positive, happy girl. Next is me. I'm Joe. As the name implies, I'm pretty normal. I don't have any overwhelmingly bad qualities, but on the other hand, I don't have any overwhelmingly good ones either. I live in this apartment a short walk from the university. This is where us four friends usually gather before going out. This guy here, looking all relaxed on my bed, is Michael. He's my neighbor, living in the apartment next door. One day, while I had Celeste over, he just barged in. Hey man, your place looks pretty nice. Mind if I join you for dinner? He said. As you can imagine, he's pretty pushy. I don't think he realizes it himself. He came over several times after that day. After that, we somehow naturally became friends. That's a tiny apartment. So one day, Darren came up with the idea that we should go camping. Darren said his family had a cabin a little bit into the forest. So camping we went. It could be fun, right? Of course, me, Michael, and Celeste disliked the idea of staying in a cabin. It's a camping trip, so we have to sleep in the wilderness. So Darren told us about the woods near the cabin. I don't remember much about the trip to the cabin. We joked around. Took a few breaks, normal stuff. Either way, we drove up to the cabin and left the car there. We we took a short break in the cabin and set out into the wilderness. We were pretty far in. I couldn't say how far in distance exactly, but it took several hours to get to where we set up camp. First day, we just screwed around. Nothing abnormal happened. But then... Oh, yes. Run! I set out to gather wood for a new fire and water to cook with. Oh my god. What is that sound? It doesn't sound like something you'd hear in a forest. There we go, a bucket of water. Run. <laughs> the sound stopped. I poured the water into a cooking pot. I should have enough wood to make the fire last a while tonight. Alright, let's get... Let's cook something up, shall we? Later that evening. Time lapse. Oh yeah, I can walk this way. What the hell is up with this fog? Every time I've been here before, there hasn't been... There haven't ever been any fog. It's time to go to sleep soon.
we're all out of booze. Guess we have to go back to town tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to the four-hour trek. Maybe we shouldn't have gone so deep in. <laughs> it's really chilly outside for being in the middle of summer. Hey, anyone else hear that? Yeah, now that you mention it, what is that? <laughs> Sounds like something medley. Medley? <laughs> is that even a word? Are you stupid? Shut up, asshole. If I say it, it's a word if I say so. <laughs> it stopped. Maybe it was some kind of machine? Who the hell would go out of... Go out hours from the nearest civilization in the middle of the night. And start revving up some kind of weird machine. Who gives a shit? It's probably someone using a chainsaw or something. Let's go to sleep. I'm tired. I'm sure it was no chainsaw. I wonder what it was. <sighs> Sleepiness soon overtook everyone. But something woke you up a few hours later in your half-awake state. You stumble outside the tent. Um, can I move yet? Oh, yeah, I can. Darren, Michelle, Celeste, is that you? The mist is even thicker than before. I can't see much. Uh, Michael, is that you? <laughs> Say something, will you? Who are you? Oh, shivers. Whoa, stop right there. I have a knife. Hey, wake up. There's something outside the tent. Uh, what? Ugh. I'm sure there is. Lots of squirrels and shit go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Hmm, yeah. I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. That thing outside looked like you. It was, it was probably some animal. I don't think we have to worry about a fox or whatever. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, all right then. Maybe it was just some animal. But those sounds. A few minutes later. <laughs> okay, drop it, whoever that is. I want to go to s I want to sleep already. It wasn't me. Me either. That didn't sound like any of our voices. Well, shit, now I'm never going to be able to sleep. Should we go outside and look? What if it's some crazy psycho with an axe? All the more reason to check it out. It's not like the tent is some kind of impenetrable fortress. Seriously, if that was one of you guys, tell me right now. This isn't funny anymore. Uh -huh. Okay, everyone, get out together and check it out. I ain't going alone. What the heck is that? Someone was definitely here. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. C calm down, Celeste. We are four against one here. It'll be fine. <laughs> what if the dude got some kind of weapon with him? I mean, he killed the little, little critter, didn't he? Michael's right. We gotta get the hell out of here. We can't just up and leave. It's the middle of the night. And what about our stuff? Screw the stuff. I'm not staying here another minute. Well, fine, we'll leave. But at least bring the flashlight and some food and water. I think you're overreacting, though. We haven't seen anyone. Still, someone or something left this dead critter here. Creature. 
We can't exactly go back to sleep with no worries. I guess you're right. I'll go get the flashlight. Everyone bring some stuff you think we might need. A couple of minutes later. <sighs> All right, let's go. It's so dark. At least still summer is not pitch black. The fog is really annoying though. So we're going back to the cabin, right? I guess that's the plan. A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. He was swearing and looking all around. <laughs> We've been walking for an awfully long now. Are you sure we are on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We are on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp, though. I said we're on the right path. But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea where we were. Darren couldn't find the path. Maybe it was the fog, maybe the darkness, maybe something else. Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling where you think someone is watching or stalking you. I nearly tripped over Celeste when she fell. I kind of wonder what happens if you say no, but I think that's going to be a bad ending. I took Celeste's hands and dragged her to her feet. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that someone was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something, somewhere, was wrong. I realized the sound from earlier was back, softer, but still present. I started looking around, panicking. I did a head count, or my, more accurately, a silhouette count. Me, Celeste still holding my hand, Darren in the lead, Michael to the left. Who the heck was that guy beside Michael? My grip on Celeste's hand tightened and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out, but was worried. If I did, maybe that thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I don't know what to do. I ran my fingers along the knife I had brought from camp. Then the cabin appeared, out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. The neck, the thing turned and walked away into the mist. I caught up with the others as they entered the cabin, practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and we were arguing about where we put it. I told them what I saw, obviously they didn't believe me. Still, everyone hurried inside and locked the door. He followed us here. He really wants something from us. He doesn't seem to have anything to break down the door with, though. What the hell does he want with us? Hell if I know, ask him. Hey, don't touch the door. I wasn't gonna. <sighs> She's breathing quite heavily. We're safe in here, it's cool, man. It's a sturdy door. It'll be alright, won't it? Did he go away? Shit, the bastard hit the breaker. He can't get in, right? Yeah! Celeste. He is just, just trying to scare us. Take it easy. Uh, let's go see Celeste. 
She seems to be hyperventilating. It's all right, Celeste. The door is locked. And it's the only way in. We're safe here. No response. Mm. I'm starting to believe what you saw. What you say you saw earlier. Hmm. It, it's fine. He's just trying to scare us. Yeah, you guys you guys believe that. Because I got the bad ending and apparently I shot you all. Let's look out the window. Oh my god! Who is that? No one, because they're retreating. Oh, and our friend's down here now. Oh, god. We're safe here. It's cool, man. You saw something looking like me? Suddenly, a strange sense of nausea hit me. There was something in the air. I could feel the horror overtaking me again. And Celeste is leaving the door. I'm just gonna... My head is splitting apart. Uh, I really want to lay down, but I have to make sure everyone is safe. Oh my gosh. No, you don't. Uh -huh. can't get up. So I have to go see Michael now. Oh, I can run? Okay. I... I don't feel so good. Okay, bed. I can't take any more. I had to lie down. I couldn't sleep, and I wouldn't have even if I could. I just wanted to rest. I waited for the world to stop spinning. I looked out a window. There was someone in the tree. I stared back, not able to register what was going on. I quickly pulled the blinds down. Celeste came through the door. She looked pale and disheveled. I dragged her onto the bed and laid her down. She was gasping for air, as if someone was suffocating her. Eventually, her breathing became regular. I asked her where the others were. She shrugged. The room had stopped spinning for a bit, but I felt far from good. I'll go look around. Wait here. Oh. Suddenly, a voice came... A voice could be heard from the locked door. What was worse, though, was that it was Celeste's voice. Let me in! Let me in! God, let me in there! I immediately pulled my knife and placed it at Celeste lying in the bed. Her eyes grew wide with shock and alarm, but they could have been fake. What are you doing? No! I'm the real one! The one out there! That's the imposter! I was in a kind of trance, unsure what to do and staring down at her. Maybe I would have stabbed her if the voice at the door hadn't changed some low deep, guttural voice. Then it became high-pitched. Like a little girl's, I pulled my knife away. I snapped out of the trance. Now the nausea was returning. I got to the door and opened it. There was nothing there but a trail of black liquid. Suddenly, I got the feeling that it might not be the best idea to go outside. We're going out anyway. The thing was nowhere to be seen. Just as I was turning around, I took a look at the roof. There it was. It was close to a corner, about to turn. It looked like an albino male with really long limbs. He had fingers instead of toes and all 20 of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly, the head swirled 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up as if suffocated. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth, slowly and deliberately. I thought it was going to devour me when its tongue snaked out. On the tip of the tongue was my face, like a tumor. 
Eyes closed, lift up, turn into some psycho smile. There's a legend somewhere that when you see a double ganger, you die. I thought of that legend. But then the creature rounded the corner and it was gone. I lost it and followed it. And followed. Vision hazy. My heartbeat suddenly seemed ear-splitting to me. I was stumbling because my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly, I stumbled forward and toppled down. Once I lay there, face down in the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. I couldn't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and stirred closing on their own accords. I saw white feet with long fingers for toes step into view. When my eyes opened, Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. Get up! Get up! That bastard was in your skin! My head hurt. I was about to ask what happened when she started pulling me backwards towards the door. We toppled out and stumbled towards Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remembered. I was glad to be alive. The missus stopped. Stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed. I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up and face buried in his knees. Some clothes, stained with blood, were beside him. They were mine. Darren immediately stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. I asked what was going on. The thing joined us. He looked like you. We got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road when Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael. He had his glazed over look in his eyes. That thing burst out of your clothes and jumped out of the car. Michael had the shotgun. He was firing out the window. He saw the thing run all the way back to the house at the friggin' speed of light. It was in my skin. Yeah. I looked down at myself, wondering if I had been possessed or if worse, the thing had cut off my skin and wore it as a coat. I shuddered at the thought of something crawling around in my skin. I asked Michael if he was alright. That thing talked to me. I asked about what. He didn't respond. I realized he was sobbing. The car jolted into motion. Darren fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned back toward the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. The thing was in front of the car on the windshield. It opened its mouth and my tongue face slithered out. Celeste fired the shock. She fired a shotgun. Okay. The glass shattered and it was thrown backwards. Darren shrieked and I saw blood coming from his face. Something pierced my face and I realized it was glass. The car skidded to a stop. The car doors opened without any discernible reason and I fell out. The thing laid directly across from me, eyes closed as if it was sleeping. I wish I could close my eyes. Its mouth hung open and I saw myself again emerging. I didn't move or say anything because I couldn't. My face looked at me and started to talk. I love you. I love you. I love you. I want to be you. It repeated over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wondered if it was going to bite me to death. The things I shot open and I realized it was going to kiss me. I managed to regain some control and instinctively twisted back from it. I guess that's what saved me. There was a sound like an explosion and blood spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing over it. Her face and body were bleeding and she had a spaced out psych psychopathic look in her eyes. She had just fired the shotgun. My face looked directly at me. I am you. I whispered. She fired again and I saw my own face begin rotting to nothing more than a skeleton in front of me. The thing's head flowered open. That's the best word I can find to describe it. 
Its head kind of split and split again, peeling away. I saw faces, lots of them, all on the inside of its head. I think I saw Celeste and Michael's face. They were whispering something unintelligible. In the center, where the brain should be, there was a single red cat-like eye that was rotating in its socket. It was protruding some kind of metallic droning sound. Celeste fired one last time. The thing sort of withered away, became wrinkled and smaller and rotted, rotted until it just disappeared. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually, I stood up. We got into the car silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. We explained the way the damaged car is being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shock-like state. Our hero was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of the incident later, he denied it ever happening with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead and he had lost weight. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember or if he generally, genuinely knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It's been two months now. We still refrain from talking about it. If you were expecting some huge twist or something, you'd be disappointed. I still don't know what met, what we met out there. I don't want to know, actually. I still have nightmares about my own face, shouting, I am you. One thing I do know, though, I am never going camping ever again. Huh. Okay.